like to call the Board of Trustees for the Village of Weston to order. You could arise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. So we can do a roll call. Maloney? Here. Hermelay? Here. Cronin? Here. Feeney? Here. Hardinger? Here. Marlin? Here. Sagami? Here. All here and accounted for. Public comments. Uh, Jim, you want to talk now or if you agenda, or agenda item? Uh, I can, yeah. I have 44 and 45. I had some things and then I just said a brief. 44? Can I, I'm just going to write that on here. Okay. So you're going to pass right now? I um, have one other thing that's not related to those two agenda items. Okay. Uh, state your name and address for the record. Sure. Jim Penson, 5002 Arrow Street. Um, I respect the fact this isn't a, this is just public comment. It's not pull the audience or, or ask the board. Uh, but I did want to make a, a statement about a couple of agenda items, which we just talked about 44 and 45. Um, but what isn't on the agenda is on the agenda, but related to that, uh, Administrator Donna prepared a, a report um, and it was very informative. Uh, I had some questions on some of that stuff and maybe this is already rolling and ahead to some board members to, to discuss and ask about that, but how many punch list items still remain on the list um, with Meyer and the architect for completion and then what's the time frame for those items? Um, and then what was the estimated time of arrival for the remaining audiovisual equipment? I thought it was supposed to be March-ish, which is next week, but obviously that stuff gets pushed back and, and depending upon stuff. And then uh, what's the official date or do we have a, a total number for um, when Myron is responsible for the utilities um, at 4747? Um, and what exact utilities does it include? Is that water, sewer, and telecommunications? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any more for public comment? Nate, anybody online? Nope. Is it online? Are we online? Yeah, we are. We are? Okay. All right. Who's watching you or him? Both okay. cool of us. I have the screen. He's got the pie. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. One more time. Anything else for public comment? Uh, hearing none. Let's move on. Uh, public hearing. Open the public hearing. Uh, amendments to Chapter 74 of the Municipal Code of Ordinances entitled Subdivision Regulations. Uh, we'll see six. Acknowledge Plan Commission Resolution 2023-PC-001, a resolution recommending adoption of Ordinance Number 23-002, an ordinance amending Section 74.6.06, Street Dimensional Standards, and a Section of 74.6.11 Sidewalks, Walkways, Multi-Use Paths, and the Subdivision Ordinance. Packets not opening. Hmm? I'm having some packet issues. So which one you punched on, right? Uh, so this is the public hearing for the subdivision ordinance. Um, these are some changes that um, Michael had requested um, be brought through in regards to the Birch Street project. So the Planning Commission did a look at these and are recommending them for approval. They are outlined starting on page eight um, is the ordinance. And then you can see the amendments um, start on page 10. So there is a change, there is adding some language about when crossing bridges, culverts, or adjacent to other environmental obstacles. Paths may be located closer than six feet to the road while the obstacle exists. This is something from the Birch Street project and then also from the uh, Weston Avenue project. Uh, he's asking to change underneath minimum widths, um, allowing an eight foot pavement width. This is um, allowed by the DOT. Uh, so those are basically the changes. And he probably has some more information on it if you have questions. Any questions? 
I have one. Are we, is this the public hearing on items five, six, and eight? Because I think we have all three of them on one. Yes, it would be. This, was the closed public hearing supposed to be listed after agenda item eight? No, because then we have to approve. Okay. Yep. All right, just asking. I saw all three on here. Yeah, normally there's like a question time in there. Did we miss maybe that? Because um, if I have a puzzle look more than normal, <laughs> it might be that. But yeah, I, I kind of was a little confused because I thought there was like a, a discussion area. But it, it's all in the minutes. It's all approved by Planning Commission. So if there's nothing else on five or six, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, oh, what? Just, uh, I just wanted to. Yeah, I think, yeah, we have to acknowledge and approve them before we close, don't we? No, no. we're going to close the public no. hearing. So normally you would ask if anybody has any um, Question. questions. Yep, and I did. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you close the hearing first and then you take action. The order through me. It's a day. So that one's in my column. I was right. Yep. All right, good. Just got to get a couple more in there, you know. All right, so now I close the public hearing. And eight, approved ordinance number 23-002, an ordinance amending section 74.6.06 street dimensional standards and section 74.6.11 sidewalks, walkways, and multi-use paths of the subdivision ordinance. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Cronin. Second. Mm, second by a trio. <laughs> and I would say I heard Nate first, so I would say a second by Feeney. Anything on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, against or no? Uh, so carried. Wow, had a little, uh, little freeze there. Minutes from previous meetings: uh, nine and ten, one sixteen twenty three board of trustees meeting, and two six twenty three special board of trustees meeting. Move to approve nine and ten. Mo motion to approve by Zagami. Second. Second by Feeney. Anything on the questions? Anything on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Reports, minutes from boards, committees, and commissions. A pleasure. Move to acknowledge items 15 and 19. Motion to acknowledge by Feeney. Second. Second by Ermeling. Anything else on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Reports from departments, 23 administrators. Um, a couple updates from uh, report. We spoke with uh, some of the people at Myron who would be able to help us on an open house, I guess. We do want to schedule an open house for this facility. Um, looking at sometime in May as the uh, target date, maybe the second, third, or fourth week, or fourth week before Labor Day, or Memorial Day, I'm sorry. Um, so, talk at one at one point about possibly on a Saturday, but also perhaps maybe we prefer to do it on a weekday, like say two to four or four to six or something like that. So I don't know what the board's preference might be um, as we try to plan that and get some notification out about it. Um, do you have any thoughts, or you want? You send a poll around or something. I don't, I'm not sure what the preference would be. I don't think we're not talking about anything extravagant. Just want to have uh, maybe something similar to what we did for the groundbreaking. So maybe I would suggest maybe having a tour, like at certain yep. times, mm -hmm. um, sure. yeah, so that you, you know, I'm sure everybody's curious what the garage looks like and why we needed to go that route. So maybe have some. Uh, times for tours? No, either, and, and I thought of a tour also, or enough people stationed everywhere that they could kind of point to <coughs> in directions. Because um, the tours, I don't know, it could be like a few and it could be a ton. I would imagine there'd be a lot of interest. Like you could do that a couple spots. different ways, sure. Yeah, what? You could do that in a couple yeah. different ways. Either have guided tours or have stations. Yeah, we'd have to have people go to that. Plenty of people out there just, you know, in case somebody wanders or something. It I, might even be interesting to have some of those photos of the old crotch out there so they can take a look at what we were managing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what we have now, I think, would be kind of, because a lot of people say, well, why wasn't that garage big enough? And it's, apparently you've never been in it, you know. Yeah, we've got a lot of photos like that. I mean, 
you know, I just think that might be a little bit informative to, to kind of see where we were and what we have. And, you know, and I would, for me, I think a weekend would be Saturday or something, because during the week, people work. I mean, you know, let's face it. I would it. agree. I would say weekend or an evening. Probably not Sunday, because no. church and yeah. Yeah. When did, when did Green Egg have theirs? You went to that. Hey, oh, you went to that Green yeah. Egg one. Um, so it's Saturday? Yes, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Thanks, Saturday. I'll, I'll, whatever the hours are, I'll be here the whole time. But wherever you want me. I mean, I don't know. Do we open up the back, the front door only? Do we open up all the garage doors? Can people park where they want? I don't know. But we're going to have to have people well, you, stationed I, everywhere. So I guess the question would be, do you want some kind of little ceremony, some kind of a little, uh, okay, introduction and recognition of the, you know, the fact the building's here? And I don't know. Do you want to see them wrapped around a couple blocks? Let's offer the first 500 a free bag of something like all these Cookies. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Well, I'll tell you, they're wrapped around all these. I, I have never seen anything like it. <laughs> couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, I, I'm serious. I couldn't believe it. No, I don't, I don't think we should do that, but. I think, um, I don't know, 10 to 3. I mean, we have plenty of time to talk about it. So. Well, yeah, we just want to start some prep time planning or and getting some notification out for that. So, is there going to be ribbon cutting? Or? Well, I think that would be another thing to do. Yeah, I think you should have the ribbon in the front, and our president should cut the ribbon. And the well, we, could all, we could all cut it. You know. Maybe a ribbon cutting at 10 and tours from 10 to 3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe 10 to 2, whatever you think. You know, maybe 10 to 2, and then if the crowd is still here, you extend it. So if you go to 3, then it might go to 4. So, entertainment, bouncy houses. Oh, definitely entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> Put them in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe it'd be when you do your uh, spring show, your spring. Uh, don't you suspend people off of the donut shop sometimes? That's uh, the top of the shop. You, you guys do a spring thing, don't you? Or a fall thing? When you have the equipment up by the farmer's market? Yeah, that's usually in May. Bingo. It's, so uh, we talked about- let's, think, let's knock this thing out all at once. We talked about uh, coordinating with Public Works Week, which is uh, what week? May 21st, I think. Is there any safety? Mm -hmm. the week? Any safety stuff? I don't think we want to do it. Thinking that, you know, that we want to put some equipment on. <clears throat> Certainly, we can do whatever you guys need. Yeah. yeah. Get a fire truck or two. So okay. more like the twentieth. I don't think we want to do it on the sun Saturday before Labor Day no. or Memorial Day. I'd say the third week. Yeah, I would agree. <coughs> okay. Okay. Some invitation out to some people. I think that's all we want to do. Sure. I think we should send to some specific people. I, I think um, maybe uh, send the invitation out for that specific Saturday to all the staff and all the committees and commission and the board, making sure we get a good majority media and, too. And, and, and media too. And then if we can go from there, then we'll <coughs> send postcards out to the community, social media. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely postcards. Postcards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it could be neat. Kind of like the election card. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, those are nice. <laughs> yeah, they definitely got them. Well, okay. otherwise, <laughs> they say, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Well, well, save the date. You know, yeah. have it on there and come and see. Yeah. Yeah. Think we so now we would have a date. Now we would have a date for people to say when we when we sent some out before we just yeah, indicated it was going to be gen generally in the spring. Sorry. Yeah, they're they're definitely talking about it. So we're thinking uh, uh, the twentieth, right? Yeah. So we just um, suggested it was the twentieth. <clears throat> um, let's see. I won't be here. I just realized that won't I won't be here on the 20th either, if that matters. Yep. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually leaving the, the 18th or 19th, and I won't be back till the 27th. Oh, so the 13th. 13th. Can we go to 13th? Yeah. Because yeah. I'd, I'd like to be here. Let's try the 13th. It's not Friday. So. Mother's Day. Is it? Oh, Mother's Day is on the 14th? Mm -hmm. Oh, they'll be all out then. That'll be perfect. Is that May? We could have some, uh, all the mothers that come, we'll give them a free person. May? May, yes. Flower. 13th. You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of serious about that. 
So we could actually, I could talk to Krieger Floral and see if we can get some. I don't know unless you think that's that corny. Might be the, what? That might be the weekend the farmer's market. Oh, well, okay. It should be even better. Okay. It's going to draw more traffic. Yeah. 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 Farmers yeah. Farmers if that sounds corny on the Mother's Day thing, you know, and they don't have to prove it. Just are you or not? And if you want a flower, I'll give you one. <laughs> okay, so are we thinking the 13th? Can we try it for that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, when is the garage sale? I'm sorry. Is that the garage sale weekend? Do we know? No, it's usually the first weekend. Is it? It's usually the uh, fourth and fifth. Okay. Oh, no, it's August. I'm sorry. I, my phone went flat. We're, we're not going to be able to make everybody happy. We're going to yeah, have to. Yeah, no, it's usually the fourth, fifth, and sixth, isn't it? It's the first weekend. Usually. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so that'll be good. Yeah, we should advertise the heck out of that. Even if it is garage sale weekend, there's going to be more traffic yep. and more yep. people that are yep. sale, So, <clears throat> would we want to make a garage sale weekend <laughs> on the 13th? On the 6th. Oh, no, I probably wouldn't make We could it bring all the extra stuff from over there that we <laughs> And we could sell it off here. <laughs> <laughs> auction it off at the end of the day. You don't even have to move it. It's your it could be just send the invitation to Chamber also. No. Yeah, Chamber 2, that's a good idea. <laughs> chamber, construction companies, all the construction companies. Yeah, that's a good idea. And uh, honestly, to the other municipalities, I would I would absolutely invite all the other county and all the municipalities around here. Absolutely. School districts. Yep, school district. County, uh, county supervisors that represent Weston. All right. We got that thing figured out. What else? <laughs> okay, so um, also got an update from John Wallenkamp. He's expecting to be submitting the uh, plans for the exterior of the public safety building on Wednesday. Yeah, you said Wednesday, you should have by close business Wednesday. Um, <laughs> and to address the question from uh, Mr. Pinsonall, the punch list will be added to, can be added to through any time here as we go forward. Okay. There are a number of items on the exterior of the building that can't be done until next summer. So what number's on there? I can't tell you reps on my head. I can certainly find out, but um, there is still work that continues even though we are at substantial completion. And yeah, next summer or this summer? This coming summer. Well, so like three months from now. Yeah, yeah. what am I saying? Okay. Well, I thought you meant next year. And I yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I understand why. Yeah. The same. Yeah, it's that it's winter. I'm thinking of next yep, summer. Well, this summer, I guess. I'm sorry. So okay. Um, I think the other item if may ask is the warranty item because we have warranty on the building and all the equipment. If those problems come up, they have to come back again and mm -hmm. take care of it. Yep. True. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, I guess that's it. There's right of way acquisition yeah. items went up or uh, Western Avenue and uh, the nominal payments for the um, temporary easements are pretty much going as they're offered or as they're presented. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Akeem? Um, just Mr. Pinson, all that asked about the utility bills is going. Yeah, those are through the. Uh, I believe it was through the end of December okay. as part of the contract. And then telecommunications was the villages all along. That never would have been part of this. And never would have been part of the contractor's obligation. Okay. okay. Uh, 24, clerk. Any more you want to add, Pam? No. Oh, any questions for Pam? 25, finance. Jessica, anything you want to add? Nothing more to add. Any questions of Jessica? 26, fire and EMS. Chief, thank you. Um, we have a report in the packet, and uh, we did have a battalion chief that resigned. Um, so we have a posting up right now for a battalion chief position. Um, so we'll be working to fill that position. And the biggest issue we have right now is continuing with staffing problems. We did hire some part-time people. Um, our, our fully, when we're fully staffed, we're at eight people. Um, our minimum staffing is at six. We're, we're only staffed up to eight about 20% of the time. We just looked today. So, so far this year, we're only staffed at eight about 20% of the time. So we are working on ways to try to fix that in the future. Um, other than that, it's pretty much business okay. as usual. Yep. And we got a meeting on Wednesday night? Correct. 5.30 at the courthouse? Yes. Yep. Or upstairs? Yeah, I think it might be upstairs actually. Okay. Yep. Okay. 
Uh, 27, Park and Rec. I didn't see Sean, did I? No. Uh, he doesn't have nothing to add. Uh, 28, Planning and Development. I have nothing to add. Dad, any questions for Jen? Uh, 29, Chief Schultz. <clears throat> uh, just a brief staffing update. We currently have three vacancies. Um, we have two people that we gave conditional offers to in a police commission meeting last week. And we also promoted Tanner Hooley, Sergeant, effective today from Sam Strike's retirement. Um, and we have no other applicants for spots. So. All right, any questions? Chief Schultz, thank you for what you guys do. Uh, 30 Public Works, Michael. Uh, there's nothing additional to add. Uh, other items on the agenda? Okay. Questions? Any questions? Uh, 31 Technology, Nate. <clears throat> Only thing I guess to add to Tim's question. Um, I spoke with the Campbell Park Technic Point today. Um, we're still waiting on two items. Still expecting sometime in March. They didn't have any tracking dates on shipping yet. But... Okay. So I haven't watched any video you know, since we've been here. It's hard for anybody to watch themselves, but um, does the voice carry? You know, has anybody listened to any video that you can hear it? It's been in the last building, but not. Here's harder. Okay. Well, the other one had uh, speakers, but we'd have no speakers to it. Or do right, we? Not right now, no. Okay. Are, are these stream? Are these stream live? Yes. yes. Or are they? Yes. Or are they just recorded? No, they're live. Okay. They're yeah, they're live. What are these little things? On the floor, yeah. Those are microphones for the, the Zoom meeting. Oh, okay. So they're on right now. Yeah. Okay. So we're, they're picking up some. Yep. But we're gonna have like stuff here, right? Well, they'll be able to replace the microphones <laughs> are gonna be in the ceiling with the new okay. package. Okay. Cool. Can you do the volume up for each person? Yeah, you can. You can control each zone of the room. Um, so like that side of the room will be getting more. I see. Sound from over here. Oh, so not per individual. No, not per individual. Okay. They're zoned. Okay. All right. Any questions for Nate? Okay. Work product transmittals 32 and 33, January building permits and January budget status, if you want to take them at the same time. Move to acknowledge items 32 and 33 concurrently. Uh, motion to uh, acknowledge by Feeney. Second. Second by Wyland. Any more on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Is that the agenda? Uh, vouchers. Uh, 580, 70, 61 to 589. 61. Okay. Second. All right. Motion by Ermeling, second by Zagami. Anything on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Our ordinances 37. Ordinance number 23 003, an ordinance adopting the 2023 official zoning map and official extraterritorial, first time I ever got that right, zoning map for the village of Weston. Motion to approve. By Cronin. Second. Second by Ernley. On the question. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carry. 38, ordinance number 23-004. An ordinance to approve the rezoning of a parcel of land located at 6207 Business Highway 51 in the Village of Weston from B2 Highway uh, Business to BD Plan Development district and an associated general development plan. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Cronin. Second. Second by Hardinger. Anything on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 39. Ordinance number 23-005, an ordinance to amend the official zoning map to rezone two sites to the BD plan development zoning district and establish a P PD specific implementation plan for each site. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Cronin. Uh, point of order. Uh, is this uh, approve as is or approve with the modifications? And actually we thought we should. Well, why don't we get them up first? So uh, second by uh, Wyland, now point of order. Yeah. This might be a two and old for me tonight. Um, so I think it's just approved as it is. As it is, okay. We, we made modifications to it at planning. At the planning oh. commission. Right, but the recommended language had approve, approve with modifications or deny. So that's why 
I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same page. That's so all we talked about. But whoever, whoever wrote that in there gave that option because it, it was approved by the Planning Commission as is, correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay, so that, that happens to be an option, right? Those are paying. always the options right. for okay. every um, rezone request. So you, you we're picking the as is, correct? Yes, correct. That's what my okay. was. Any more on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? So carried. Uh, resolutions are on unfinished, unfinished business. Update the possible action on American Rescue Plan, ARPA funds. It, that's just like a This is the placeholder. It's a placeholder. Okay. Okay. You can see that it, it's know, all in there. Not been a change. You can take a look yeah. at But if you have ideas on other ideas, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, here, not new business 41 discussion on developing an official policy for the use of the municipal center training room. Request to use the training room for Weston Community Blood Bank drives. But it, we're technically talking about an official policy in general, right? Or right. specifically, and then on top of that, specifically asking about the blood drive. <laughs> to potentially allow the blood drives to continue as we're still working on a policy, mm -hmm. depending on what your yeah, I, I, I just would be. Because I don't, I don't think it's right that, I mean, that I don't want Valerie to have to be up there and hold the whole thing up for policy when all she's really requesting is the blood drive. Sure. So I think, why don't we do the blood drive first? Okay. And so why don't we either yay or nay the blood drives until an official policy is developed? Because the official policy might not happen today. Correct. All right. Right. Because there's, there's going to be a lot of thought, and we'll, we can talk about that afterwards. So, um, it, I mean, you're up there, so why don't you state your name and, and add us for the record? <laughs> Valerie Parker, uh, 230801, County Road Y in Bramwood, um, Planning Technician, Village of Weston. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so, and help to excuse me, I've got a little thing here because otherwise I get off on tangents, but. Um, Yes, yeah, so I'm here tonight to get the, the discussion started on drafting a policy on the use of the Municipal Center training room. First, just a quick, quick touch on the blood drives that I coordinate every couple of months. Um, so through the approval of Daniel Guild back in 2015-2016, I have been working with Versity Blood Center of Wisconsin, where the village is the host site for the local community blood, blood drives put on by them. And these have been known as the Village of Weston Community Blood Drive. The blood drives were held at the Municipal Center about every couple of months or uh, around 54 days each. And because I am a huge supporter of blood drives in general and being a blood recipient myself, I typically donate my time while they are on site and serve as the greeter of the donors who come in, getting the donors checked in. And of course, I'll donate a pint of blood myself too. Uh, I then make sure the room is put back together and the building is locked up. So when COVID hit, the drives were no longer able to be held at our old municipal center since we were close to the public. They were then temporarily moved to Dale's Weston Lanes. And so I have been under the impression that once our new facility was completed and open to the public, that the Weston community, community blood drives would start being held at the new municipal center. So when the February 2nd drive was being planned, I started telling all of our regular donors and advertising on Weston social media that this drive was going to be held at the new municipal center. We had a really good, uh, successful blood drive on February 2nd. And during the five hour event, there were 35 donors who came through, through the five hour period, which is, which is actually a really good turnout. Um, and the majority of the people that came in to donate were actually Weston residents. And so, um, so with this blood drive occurrence, a question was raised about how we should have a policy in place on the usage of the training room before we hold public events here, as other organizations and groups may request the use of our training room as well. And because I feel these blood drives are very important and I feel important to our community, I offered to spearhead this discussion. And however, prior to drafting an official policy for consideration, I thought it'd be best to bring up this topic before you for a discussion to find out what you would like to see included or not included in a policy document. Within the meeting packet, I have noted several different scenarios for you to consider during your discussion tonight. I welcome your questions and comments, but also ask for your verbal approval tonight that I'd be allowed to continue holding the Western Community Blood Drives here the next one being scheduled for April 6th. 
And if you would like a better visual of the room situation, I do have some photos that, um, that Michael could pull up. Um, but again, we welcome your thoughts and comments. Well, I, so reading, reading the packet, and um, if, if some of you have or haven't, um, it's this this one happens to be a not for profit. It's not for profit. Is that is that? Can we just verify that again, just to? Yeah, sure. I can verify. Okay. So and then um, and I'm just gonna. This sounds a little uh, crude, but where does the blood go? Oh, so the blood that's collected. So what is, what is initially collected? It's actually taken down to Milwaukee, where their main hub is. Um, it gets it goes through all the testing. It, it gets. Um, some of it is processed, so they pull out platelets, whole blood, whatever. Uh, but the whole blood, um, so we are, or we, they are actually the, the, the supplier of, of blood to the Marshall Clinic Health Systems. Okay. Um, and along with the other hospitals, um, I don't think they supply Aspirus, but I know Marshall Clinic is one of them. And so and this is another reason why it's important to me because when I had my big surgery a few years ago and I had to have a blood transfusion, um, knowing that diversity supplies blood there and I've been giving blood to them for all these years, it's like it's kind of a full circle for me. Um, and, I, and I know it's dear to your heart. Um, I guess my question is, this is going to be, we have, we have to really think about this. So, I mean, I would absolutely say yes to this next one. And I'd say we just do each one until we get a policy. Because, you know, when do you say yes and how do you say no? Uh, because what if three other blood drives come here yeah. and want to do that? You know, do we actually say no or do we just fill it up? And, and then who, who are the yeses and who are the no's? I've, I've just been part of that so much when I was in the grocery store and what I do now. And sometimes you're trying to do a nice thing ends up, can't, you end up being a stinker because you can't say yes to everybody. So, you know, so some of the examples were the Boy, or Girl, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, um, some other ones were in there too. And, you know, then there's the, you know, do we charge a fee? You know, who cleans up? And I know, you, I'm sure if you were to host on all these, it'd be unbelievable. You know, it'd probably put back together better than it was when you first got in that room. I, would, I wouldn't doubt it for a minute. Um, so we, we just got to kind of think this a little bit. I mean, I, I think we just kind of take some steps, some soft steps and, and allow this because I've gone through there many times, Valerie, when you're doing that, and I, I just feel great about it. Um, and, and if that blood does end up back up here, that's outstanding too. So maybe Milwaukee needs a little bit of our blood up here. So that might be good too. I should have maybe said that. But any other comments? Anybody no, else? I think we have to look because I know at one time we used to try the, there was a point scout troop, but then they didn't leave it quite as nice as what they should have, you know. Um, and well, if you're going to have to clean, then it's no because it costs us money. Yeah. I think definitely there's two things we need to take into consideration whether or not it's going to develop the community or it's going to aid in the community and the blood drive definitely does that. And the second thing is is what the history of the organization is and who takes care of it. And you have an excellent history of making sure that when it's done, we're put back or better than it was. So I think we should do it in, you know, each time so that we're not just giving a okay go ahead. Well, yeah, you know, because it, basis. it may it may set a precedent, you know, because even you brought up a former administrator, which doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You know, it matters today. That's just how it got going. I know, I know. I know. Sure. But, um, I'm absolutely in favor of yeah, allowing yeah, blood, the, blood, yeah. the blood drive here yeah. going just, forward. Just, I, don't, I don't think we need to ask every two months. I just, say, yeah. they do have they do have a schedule for the full year, um, and. Uh, it would be very, be very confusing if we had to keep telling people, okay, next time you have to go there. Okay, next time you have to go yeah, here. I think if we approve it, we should prove it for the rest of the calendar year. But and, then, the and then we're kind of getting a policy. But add the dates so we know we've got it on our calendar. I listed the dates on, um, on that document. Have we ever been approached by another blood drive or are other blood drives at hospitals or clinics? Mm -hmm. And not maybe like- I know the high school clinic? has one. <clears throat> So far, it's not working very well. No. Is that a comment? Somebody made. Does that somebody want to say? Side talk. Okay. Oh. okay. Um, they do. So they also have drives. Uh, so like at the Rothschild Hall, they've been holding drives there. The same organization. Oh, okay. They also hold at um, the Marshall Clinic. They have drives there too. So they they hold multiple ones. 
throughout the community, through the, throughout the area. But I know that um, there are other there are other um, organizations that hold blood drives. There's I think there's is it the Blood Center of Marathon County, sure tons, yeah. and then there's yeah. I mean they all have the same great. You know, um, I think I think uh, Trustee Cronin has something there. Um, you know, just to put this at ease, that we yeah. do it like at one year increments until we have a yeah. policy. But um, yeah, what was she? Did we have a policy at the municipal center? I I think we did. I mean, I've been here since uh, the you know eighty one, and I remember having uh, you know birthday parties there, you know wedding yeah. stuff there, all kinds of crazy stuff, and it was just horrific for the staff. And the tables were getting busted, and Landy had to build the tables and reinforce the tables and reshellack the tables and sand, sand out carved things into the tables. I mean, it was all kinds of stuff. And it finally got to the point where no, no more. And I mean, there was nothing held there other than um, a staff Christmas party or um, uh, the luncheons that we had there sometimes. And it, it, that's what I mean. It just gets to the point where sometimes. By being a little generous, you get taken advantage of. So yeah, it did and, and then the residents would get to use it for free, and then somebody else from a different municipality would have to pay. And then there was okay, wait a minute now, who's actually having the party? Well, you're from Rothschild, but somebody in Weston is setting it up. So mm -hmm. it just gets silly. Do we want to we want to kick the bringing the policy down to one of our committees? Mm -hmm. Which one? I don't know. Mm -hmm. where, where would this fall? I mean. 85% of this building is a public works building, so mm -hmm. it's a public works, sir. Michael. I think Michael should handle it then. Michael, you should have your crew get together and form a policy. All right. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, you have to really be careful with the, like you said, renting. Yeah. It is. Yeah. just did not work. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. so like the blood drives, if other ones, you know, come here, then we would have to say yes to that too. I guess They the, couldn't conflict with yours. I guess the difference is, is that, um, but as we are, as I put in here, a chaperoned event because it does go on, it does extend beyond office hours. And right. so, right. And, I've, and I met everyone to make sure that they are, you know, everything is cleaned up and locked up. And, and, and that would be a stipulation. So, yeah. why don't we do that for a year as long as there's somebody chaperoning, whether it's, uh, it, it doesn't have to be staff, it could be a committee, a commission, it could be a trustee. I would, yep. they have to be associated yep. with the village, right? I would think. I would think. Yeah. I think why don't we just kind of crawl a little bit and see how this goes and and um, whether it's got to get to a committee or commission, we can think about that and maybe close that at the next meeting. Good job, Valerie. Thanks. You, you do a really super job here. You really do. So, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very well. And everything you do. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well deserved. Ah, uh, okay. So we need a motion for that, don't we? Yeah. So a motion to allow community blood drives to be held new facility for the remainder of 2023. Second. So a motion by Hardinger and second by Cronin. Uh, anything on the question? Did you want I, to I think we want to put that host in there. Did you want to add to that also that it would have to be chaperoned by yes. a Yeah, host or chaperone. I, I think you probably meant that, right? Yeah, I, I guess I took it as her event. She's you. Your intent was to chaperone every one of these moving forward, correct? That's my Okay. Good. Okay. She's specifically talking about the first security board. Right? Yep, and that's fine. It's the ones that she's hosting. Yep. It would have to be somebody else that volunteers her time, otherwise, anything could get done. So that's also. Another. I guess what? Uh, yeah. What? I guess what we're saying is that for your motion to allow the blood drives, that's kind of just general. Oh, you're yeah. right. Um, what's it called? Versity. Versity. With a V. The allow Versity Blood Center. Okay. So yeah. I'd like Rats withdraw the motion then, and we submit it. Or can I amend it? Amanda. Yeah, you okay. Can. So rather than community blood diversity, I'll second your amendment. Okay. So guide me along here. So are we voting yeah. on the amendment? Yeah, yes. vote on the amendment and then the I'll get this yet. So uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carry. Now on the original motion. On the motion as amended. Oh correct me. I stand corrected. I'm gonna sit, but I'm gonna I stand corrected. <laughs> um, all those um, for a, a, all those in a, a approval, Jeez. say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Wow. All right. Good job, Valerie. Then you need to all right. What's that? Oh, and then where are you going to? Did you say that you're going to have public works? 
No, I think we're teasing. I mean, he's still chuckling over there. <laughs> I mean, he's going to want a, a blood drive coffee cup for all his people. Oh. So, I mean, that's, you know. We want to have an agenda item for next month. Maybe to discuss yeah, we, we, should, we should probably try to get that going, you know. You know, might as well start talking more. People have asked, are we going to rent? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. I don't think yeah. we're going to rent. I don't think we I should even, said not to my knowledge. even consider renting out. No. no. Okay. And I, I'm okay if staff had, wants to put something together or if there was something pre existing for the old building, I'm perfectly fine with that being brought forward. It's, yeah, there I might be. I think there was an actual policy in, at the old building. I think it was just that we weren't doing it. Was like yeah. We weren't doing it. And prior to that, it was just you know, verbal and, you know, this has to be that. This has to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So done with forty one, forty two. Uh, policy for preparation of the meeting agendas and information uh, packets. My thought here is, I mean, I read quite a bit. There's quite a bit about this on here. I guess my thought is, I just, I just want this kind of engraved in stone. But four o'clock on Wednesdays, the agendas are done. Uh, I, I think it's uh, respectful and appropriate that the committees and commissions and trustees. Um, have some time to look at this and uh, not to look at 250 to 400 pages over the weekend. So I think uh, four o'clock is, is a, a very fair request on Wednesdays. Uh, we're not doing two of these a, a, a month. We're doing one a month. And I don't, I don't think there has to be a whole lot about it. Um, uh, referencing uh, Lauren's packet of 34 pages, I, I just don't, I don't understand that, I guess. So I think it, should, it could be just simple that 4.30 is the time that it's done. So, so sir. That whole thing means that is a deadline and they can't add anything to it after that? Well, I, we got a building or something coming in and it's and we know it's coming in and it was supposed to be in on Wednesday and we get it in quick and do an amendment on Thursday. You know, this last one we had, um, we missed some minutes. Our clerk uh, absolutely put herself right out there that she, it was just such a goofy uh, deal. Uh, you know, I think you saw the response, Jim, and I saw it too. And, you know, hey, we stubbed our toe, and that's the way it is. We'll get those minutes on the next time. But we could have amended this, but, you know, I don't think we had to because they'll come up at the next meeting. But something that involves building or starting to build or jobs, I think that would be, I don't want to call it an exception. So they I, uh, amend it. I, I, yeah, I, I think so. You know, but what I don't want is to talk about this for three more years. And because I brought this up a long time ago, whether I'm, you know, thought of as maybe joking about it or not, I mean, you know, and I know the last one, the, the, the real wild one over the weekend for a couple weekends ago uh, that ended up on Sunday, um, if it would have been on Wednesday, we wouldn't have worried about the power outage. So, you know, so it wouldn't even affected us. And yes, there could be a power outage on Wednesday, then so be it. But um, I just want a simple thing done. I, I don't expect anything in writing or in stone. I just think the agenda should be done at four o'clock on Wednesdays. Simple. And then there isn't this mad rush for staff even to get done Thursday and Friday too and get it all done. I, I'm sure it affects you guys also. But uh, for us to get it Friday night and then go through the weekend, I think it's just silly. We've so, done this before and for whatever reason, it always seems to go back. There can't be another reason. There can't be for whatever reason. This is, this is, this is, I mean, this has got to be professional. I yeah. mean, I look at other agendas and I look at other things and I've talked to some of our HR people that are on some, uh, you know, some big, big deals, you know, just like this is, and there is no issues. It's just, you got to get organized. You got to get it done. Most of the, uh, most of the places that I've worked or interned at, it's always been either Wednesday or Thursday. So I think that gives us time to read and ask questions to yeah. before Monday. Mm -hmm. I know I sent I, I sent Michael a couple of emails and so so I don't know what officially has to be done. I, I I don't believe official action has to be done, but if we have to have official action on this, this is kind of silly. It's not as helpful to have that in writing in a policy. Yes. Then so be it. Okay. So then. Uh, then if we want it as policy, I'll make the motion to have the agenda set out at four o'clock on the Wednesday prior to the board meeting. And a uh, committee and commission. committee and commission. Yeah, all, all, all for all staff. I mean, for all commission. So motion by Feeney, second by Cronin. Anything else more? Anything more on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried.
42, uh, 43, change order with migrant construction for utility lab. I thought we kind of had that done. I think we just formally had just, it. Just yep. for formal recognition. We actually agreed on this already at the last meeting, but we're going to formally adopt it here. So instead okay. instead of at the well house, I know we're changing part of this, uh, but it's going to get moved back here. So motion by Sagami. Second. Second by Feeney. Um, anything else on the question? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Did you ask him to give us a starting time? For that work? Yeah. I thought they did. Truthfully, uh, this morning. Yeah, well, I, I actually <laughs> thought it was last week, but it's this week, okay. Yeah, it's just more or less. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Appreciate the honesty. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 44, agreement with REI for asbestos containing building materials evaluation at 5500 Schofield Avenue. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Feeney. Second. Second by Ermeling. I thought Jim had a question on that. Yep. Uh, 44 and 45. Yes, you did. State your name and, and add this for the record. Still Jim Hansel. Uh, uh, yes, we do, but we're in the middle of the question, right? Can we do that? Pardon? Yes. Uh, when when the motion is seconded, technically that opens it up for discussion. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Jim. Um, just had a question on that. Um, I understand we're, do, we're doing the testing and that's the list of building, but is the board's intent to physically hang a for sale sign and get a realtor involved and market this property, or we're just going to hope the RFP thing gets the building sold, or where are we on that? Um, I know sitting right behind you is Kristen, right? Well, this is part of getting a handle on what issues a potential developer might encounter. So this was a step, I guess, that would be after the environmental site assessment that's already been done. Sure. So if we market it as is or want to consider raising it, any contractor that might want to bid on it is going to want to have that information. We, we have had some uh, inquiries, uh, some Pardon. loose inquiries. Right. Can we, which way can we buy it? You know, completely down or can I buy it as is? Um, the little concern as as is 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 it going to stay as is you know and then what condition does it stay in so that's a little concern you know we, we would like it to be a catalyst of more things to come so that's just kind of the maybe the thought pattern here we didn't get any RFPs though when we submitted our we submitted our first pack for request correct no we didn't receive any back I know there had been maybe some phone calls following. But certainly we will entertain that, but I, I guess one of the things we may want to talk about is if we want to say partner with a real estate, you know, commercial realtor or something to to list it. I think I think the answer on asbestos is pretty big. Yeah, I, th I think we need to have that. I, I think uh, we sell it as is and that comes up. I don't know if we can stand on that as an as is. I, I would have to say asbestos is a big item. Yeah. Sorry. I think the step they're taking is the correct way. Yeah, I do too. Because anybody wants to purchase it, that's the first thing they yeah. we already yeah. We already know about the ground contaminants. We're right. fine there. So I think this is the last chapter, the last deal. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, any more? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 45. Well, seven and eight. Change order number four. You want to just get this on the floor first and then have Jim come up. You had a question on 45? Yes, sir. Or not. Michael, what? I, I have a motion on the floor. Motion, motion, motion first. Oh, we've got to okay. start talking about it. Second. Uh, I didn't hear the first. Right. Okay, motion by Emily. Sorry. Second by Feeney. Uh, on the question. Michael, you were talking. I noticed in your packet here, it said that May 1st was initially chosen as the date for water main flushing. If we push this back, What's what's the incentive for us? Well, if so, if they can if the wells are running by September, we can still flush in fall before winter hits. <laughs> but it's still that ability. I'd say after September, it, it's a no go. And that's where it's cut off again. It's, you know. Is there a reason the DNR did not? It got held up with them as far as permitting. I don't know if it's was just the the staffing level. You know, normally their turnaround time. Is what 90 days and then they're like well it was 90 days from the time we opened your application not 90 days from the time you submitted your application and then they had questions on the um, 
the pitless units uh, out there that are being used out there since we have a central pump house instead of so the person asks a question and once they ask a question then your timeline starts again and then uh, they, they were going back and forth with the department of safety uh was dsps uh, but anywho they're they're waiting for dsps to approve and dsps is waiting for dnr to approve it so it, it just kind of took a while to get the the state to actually have their interdepartments talk to each other and communicate of what is um, what was necessary. I guess the issue I have with it is, you know, we agreed on a date. Construction's well underway right now. Yep. And and now we're now we're coming in and asking for a new date for an incentive, not just for. Yep. And, and there's there's money there's money with this that comes with the incentive, and yeah. I I don't know if I'm in favor of approving fifty thousand dollars for something that. At this point, and, and that's only if they hit that date. Um, so their completion date is in December. I think it's December twenty third. So if they finish in October, November, December, there's no, there's no incentive payment anymore for them. Um, you know, it. I guess I'm looking at how the project was pushed back. Um, I, I think it's fair. You know, they initially asked for like thirty weeks, and I was like, that's, that's not realistic. Um, and there really wouldn't have been an incentive that in that case then either because it would have been the middle of winter so is there can, a, can we flush water mains with without seven and eight online as we have in the past it it gets pretty tight with the wells three and four not running um you know we'll have well four back running with the temporary treatment but it's not at full capacity so it i would be hesitant to in case something does happen um, so the incentive is gone, right? Am I hearing that or no? Well, after that's part of the change order request is to uh, remove the the incentive date from May first to essentially August twenty eighth. Okay, so what is there something after the completion date that we would have collected? Yeah, if they're not done by December, then we can issue liquidated damages and collect on that. Okay, but they want to move the uh, incentive from when to when? From when? May 1st to August 28th would be the beginning of the incentive period. It's essentially a, a period. So if they don't, if they finish before August 28th, they would get 50,000. Just like if they would have finished before May 1st, it would have been 50,000. Um, but they're, and all they're asking for right now, the change order is the incentive portion. That, and then there is a, there is two valves that were removed from the project. That I think the incentive, I mean, I, I think we can only have so much ability to do an incentive. And if it's a DNR's fault, why us? I mean, if you want that incentive, ask the DNR for it. Well, it, it was in our contract. It wasn't, you know, so. But it wasn't the, our fault that the DNR is set on it. The date, the date didn't move. The, the date isn't made. We didn't move it to the, uh, August 28th. That's, that's, that's the DNR. Somebody should have been playing a harder ball. So why do we have to move our incentive date? And now we miss our flushing dates. What's the incentive? Well, I, I guess that's what I'm saying is the incentive is we would still be able to do a fall flushing if they hit that date. If they don't, then there is no incentive and nobody. When did when did, when did did three and four go offline? Last spring. So how did we do our flushing last fall? I'm just we curious. We, we haven't flushed the main since 21. That, that, that's kind of part of it. So, so from my opinion, I, I don't necessarily want to go another winter without flushing the mains. So it would be from <clears throat> August 28th and then it goes down until September 25th. Correct. And based on their current schedule, they're projected to finish somewhere in September. So if it makes them get done sooner, great. If they have some delays and they don't hit it, that there is no incentive for them. I see it's 50, 25, and 10. Correct. They're moving it to, they want to go to August 28th instead of May 1st, correct? Yeah, that's what the 17 week adjustment is, which is so correlates to when the anticipated DNR permit to say, yes, you can get started would have been to what it actually was. So that was part of it. They, they couldn't start work until they actually had the permission to do so. But it's important that they get it by the 20th of August if they can. Yeah. Yeah, if, if we approve this, then no, they don't get any more, uh, they don't get any more um, incentive date adjustments. No, I, I want to suggest any of it. What's your pleasure? Well, we have a motion on the floor. Yes, yes we, we do. have a motion to, yep. to approve. Yeah. So we're ready. Any more discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor oh, say no. Oh. Jim, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yep. Jim, go ahead. Ahead. Yep, yep, you're 45, I forgot. It's all good. 5002 Earl Street, Street Jim Pensnell. Um, in fall, change order two, uh, we approved the change order for $7,500 for wintering conditions. Yep. Let's uh, approve these these numbers on the board minus the $71,500 for winter and conditions. That's my vote. Because we already paid them $71,500 because it, it took a DNR longer. I don't see any reason to approve any additional dollar funding for incentives. That's a great reminder. So we paid extra because of wintering conditions. That's what it's called? Yes, sir. So there was winter a horizon. Horizon. Yep. What? Yeah, I guess when the extra, the heating and uh, ability to continue, how much more do we have to pay? 71500 Oh. What was the contract awarded? When was it awarded? Uh, it was last April. Last April. So did they think they were going to get done before winter? They were going to have last a building April. up. Yeah, so their initial schedule had a building yeah. completed by October. And, and is that still on the VNR thing again? Yeah, the, the, the whole schedule got pushed back essentially 17 weeks, you know, four months. But that wasn't their fault. Either. And it wasn't their well, fault. It's certainly in our fault. It certainly yeah. in ours. And yet we're, 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 but, but it becomes our fault when we pay 71,000 for wintering and now an additional incentive. And all of a sudden, the one that's paying, that's whose fault it is. Yeah. I, I will absolutely not vote for anyone. You know, it's, it's certainly in our fault. Why should we have to keep paying? It's, it's an act of God. It, the incentives aren't there, they're done. We already paid seventy one thousand. That's. I wish I had a job that I could just kind of keep coming back and asking for more, because of Mother Nature. It it broke ground in August, right? August September. Yeah, that's when they started well drilling. Yeah, because I was right up the road from those trusses sat out there for two months before they. Oh, they three months. Out of well, the, the trusses were delivered in anticipation of them being able to get going in July. I I don't know. I, I see a building trust is sitting on the ground for two or three months. Um, Mr. Uh, yeah. Attorney Eby? Yeah, well, what does the contract say? Because the contract should say, you know, who uh, would be responsible for any delay. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever looked at that contract, but uh, uh, that's where we should look to see who should be responsible. And actually, that, that contract should have coincided with when the permits were approved for their start date, if it was written. In such a manner, but uh, do you believe it is, Michael? Have we looked at the contract? I'll read it here quick. We had a shot at a real record. We might be letting it pass. Yeah, right out the window there, Mark. Thanks. I think it's all on corner. Yeah, we'll sure. Pretty much, are you? Pretty much. Well, they broke ground though in August ish, right? Yeah, and so, uh, well, go ahead. Bless you. Man, materials delivered shortly thereafter. I remember walking by. Materials and were there actually in July. Yeah. So, when was. And it was a, it's not a big building, but they had to get the foundation and everything else before the frost, yeah. all that stuff had to get settled 30 days before they could put anything on top of that. So, you're looking at late October, November. When was or when was our projection for DNR approval to be given? Well, it's contingent upon the permits and anyway. Right. The yeah, that's why. But yeah, that's the problem. So that's the project was awarded by the board on April 18th. Um, you know, you generally expect then. So we're using June 6th as the notice to proceed date. So kind of the date when they'd be good to go. Okay. They weren't given the okay to go until uh, October, September 30th. From the DNR. From the DNR. So it took them, yeah, like I said, about four months to get permits approved. We didn't have any pre-approval permit process through them to the DNR letting them know we're going to do this? You, you submit it, you have to submit it to the PSC, and then, you but know. an evaluation for us developing that site, isn't that usually? Yeah, so then they have to approve the specifics. So when you write it, you they sat it. on it. After we pre approved it for the project, so the DNR sat on it. It's not our fault. It's not. I don't know. I don't know. How do you, how do you, you blame DNR? You're like, you, yeah. you done with your questions? Yeah. Okay. Good. Any more on the question? Hearing none. Um, if you're voting yes, you're voting for the extra you know, payment. And if you're voting no, you're not approving. So all those in favor say aye. Opposed? 
Aye. 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 So carried. Uh, motion is opposed. 46 Weston Avenue XJ Utility Design Amendment. <clears throat> Who's got this? I can. Um, I guess at the October meeting, uh, I think it was November, maybe. Yeah, October. We had the um, cross country route approved. Uh, initially had a value of 71500 in there. Uh, when finally got the contract document uh, written, I realized that the uh, surveying cost of uh, 18000 roughly was not included. Um, so the original estimate we were given was 93750 uh, with the surveying costs and the actual uh, scope uh, we're at 89.5 so it's still less than was originally estimated but um, more than what uh, 18,000 more than what was approved at the October meeting. So, so the 93,750 was the estimate? Was the estimate. That, has that been out there? What was that? Could anybody see that? that it, well this was just with AECOM since they were the engineer contract. Did they see the 93,750? Yeah. Okay. That seems like wow. That's getting really close to the ninety-three seven fifty estimate. Why would you leave eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars on the table? No, but if you look at it, and I know I'm just saying though, yeah. this this thing just keeps. It's a moving target. It just keeps going. There's yeah. no end to this until we actually are done. So all that, and I've been asking about this on how much we're spending like monthly. That was kind of my question: is how much are we spending monthly? How much is going? And I it's tiff tiff whatever you want to talk about, but it just keeps on going. You know so. If, if we're going to design it a little bit this way, we're going to move it a little bit this way or this, that, those are some real dollars, huge real dollars. And uh, it just feels like who's in control on this? Where's the budget? Where's the ceiling? You know, just to get it to the level of construction. And uh, I, I just, I just struggle really hard with these kind of projects where the design side is so expensive. It's, it's unbelievable. Was that because of the changes we made? Correct, yeah. So this was the table that ACOM had provided. You, you can see it, it doesn't include surveying. So I, I missed that one. Didn't he drop that 93,000 to 71,000? That was the AECOM cost. So that's what I'm saying is I, I missed the surveying <coughs> that their sub-consultant has for surveying on that part. So AECOM's cost went from, you know, their initial estimate of 93, they're at 71, and then their, the surveying cost was he brought the cost to public work at 92000 And I question it. They come back with 71000 And then last time I questioned still some of the item, like the wet lab. Yeah, and, and there's, yeah. And, and so they have, so this is all estimated based on worst case scenario. Um, it's it, not to exceed number. It, it's a not to exceed number. Yeah. So if they only spend 60000 we only pay them 60000 We don't pay them eighty nine five. Their, their design services didn't include survey? In, not on this change order, because this change order went. How do they design something on the survey? So the initial design was just on the Weston Ave corridor itself. Yeah. So this. You know, wouldn't we want to have an estimate out there that's $20,000 less, 20, you know, 20%? Why, why is the need to show the estimate to the person that's going to gain? You know, it just, it just doesn't seem. Uh, Jasper planning oh, design requested a change to move mm -hmm. to move the water and utilities mm -hmm. off of West Snap mm -hmm. to the north where Sunbelt mm -hmm. yep. and Country Fresh because it made more sense yeah. for hooking water. Gonna bring it and, and, and you wouldn't have to dig through the wetlands, which mm -hmm. is yeah. expensive. So that was the reason we moved it. And that's where the, the extra eighteen thousand dollars is coming from. Okay, yeah. now that makes a little more sense. Okay, yes. yeah. That, yeah. that yeah. makes more that, sense. That helps <laughs> because we were going down the road yeah. to Shane mm -hmm. said to and that was quite a controversy about actually getting it there. Okay, yeah, I'm glad yeah, I brought that up. I've never seen a design service that didn't include survey, but. No, but change. that was a change and it was a change yeah. to there. But that change is, is this change or is this change one? the last one? Okay. Yeah. So you guys already approved that 71.5, I guess I'm asking for the 18,000 for the survey that wasn't on it. And this goes, this extra money goes to ECOM, right? Correct. They end up using. Who's doing the survey? Riverside. And that's directly from Riverside. Correct. Well, all right. Do we have to approve the full 18 or can we can we do a different number? Well, I mean fair is fair. Yeah. If it's if it's less, 18. Then it's less than yeah. get it. It can't um, be more. Okay. What's your completion date? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay. So what are, did we have a motion and a second on this? Oh, not yet. Or not? So we're doing all this talk and we're not supposed to be? Yeah. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Hermeling. Second. Second by Feeney. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 47. Business 51 official response regarding detours, cost shares, and draft state municipal maintenance agreement. This is going from where to where, Mike? So this is the curve, right? For the reconstruction of business 51, um, which the DOT will be doing from State Highway 29. Okay. So the on off ramp right there. By the bowling alley. Yep, correct. By Coeur Lanes, yep. heading north to uh, Walgreens Log Cabin and then heading west. Right? Uh, north? So, Northwest, northwest, northwest well, to the river. Down the dip and up. Yep. Yeah. Really? Interesting. Uh, they're going to use Ross Avenue for detour. Yeah, correct. So the, the one of the requests was to use local roads during construction for detours. So in our case, it'd be Ross Avenue, uh, essentially between Camp Phillips Road and, you know, kind of Metro Drive, uh, which we do have a, I guess, a, a DOT grant right now to reconstruct in 2027. So I guess we want to just make sure we coordinate that and I guess let them use it as a detour in 2026 and we'll reconstruct it in 27. After, after it gets beat up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the other request would be to use Schofield Ave as a signed detour. Um, we have talked about reconstructing that road somewhere in the 2025, 2026 timeframe, um, kind of at the end of the TIF 2 life. So can we wait until after this project? We could wait or, you know, I guess reconstruct it at a point where it's, beefy enough to, I mean, I, I would say the sign, because people following the sign detour are probably the ones out of town versus people in town who are just gonna use it anyways or find their other way around. I think the city should maintain it because yeah. they need the maintenance every year practically, especially the school for that. As for the Ross Avenue, still I think we should videotape it. Yeah, okay, um, so that's, the first ask that they had. Um, second one was an additional, uh, they're looking at upsizing the storm sewer only if the municipalities required it. Um, if they do, would upsize, if we ask them to upsize, it would cost us 308,000. Uh, the DOT would have a 1.2 million investment in it. Um, quite frankly, in talking with Rothschild Schofield, we've not, not experienced any um, surcharging or flooding by uh, McDonald's there, I guess would really be the main point. I don't know if you guys remember any. Schofield voted it down. Yeah, I, I know Sch Schofield and Rothschild both said no to the upsizing cost. Um, so I guess so we, 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 we kind of say no to, we're the, we're the lion's share, we'd get 81% of it. So they're not gonna do anything to address the flooding under the railroad overpass. So that's a separate one. So this is, okay. Yeah. So they are working with Schofield on that by Depot Street there. Um, this would just be from post out essentially down to, um, yeah, I guess McDonald's uh, Jelnick area. Um, okay. So um, for the uh, for uh, for the upsizing that you're recommending, we deny. Yep. Um, even though we haven't noticed anything, is this something that you know may be an issue in five to ten years? Um, with the new DNR requirements for any redevelopment, we have to discharge less stormwater than in the current developed state. So I guess we don't, we don't see any extra stormwater going there anytime soon. Okay. Um, and everything is fairly downhill, down gradient. So. Yeah, it's a high ground there, I think. Yeah. Um, it really wouldn't make sense that Schofield and Rothschild aren't going to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they get a little go yeah, into school. Middle of it, it wouldn't even come our way. It wouldn't. It actually, yeah, the topography in that area is going to go the other way. Right. I, I agree. I no, just, I, I yeah. Are they are they doing anything with that area in front of in front of the old Hardee's? Yeah. I know that that intersection floods during heavy rains pretty yeah. consistently too. I know it's not ours, but I don't know. I guess I'm not an engineer, so I don't under I don't know if us making this decision would affect other areas down the line. Yeah, I mean, Rothschild voted it down too. Um, I don't know if some of that's just great capacity. You know, sometimes only so much water can get into the inlets at one time. Um, it's not that often. 
I mean, it's not as often as down by uh, loss of time. Yeah. So, I mean, I know, I know he's waiting to ask this, but is there any thought of a roundabout at uh, the log cabin corner? <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't think there's a plan for a roundabout. I think that's... Uh, that'd be awesome. You know, five lanes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be part of your alley. Oh, sure. Yeah. Nice little green space in the middle of that roundabout. I'm saying. Okay. And it sure keep traffic moving. Okay. So that was item two. Item three was uh, this uh, draft state municipal maintenance agreement. They, uh, so in 2008, um, the DOT overlaid Business 51. They initially had asked Schofield, Rothschild, Weston to take on additional maintenance. Uh, the communities at the time said, no, we don't think we need to take on more responsibility for your road. Uh, so here we are again in 2023, and uh, the state is again asking us to take on uh, maintenance responsibilities for their road. Uh, Rothschild and Schofield have said no. I recommend we also say no. Yep. No. Um, okay. I agree. I don't think that's um, something we should be doing. Uh, the cost of the maintenance is higher than the cost of the mm -hmm. construction. Yeah. That's yeah. what they want. So then a, uh, a fourth item that we talked to with the state was the, uh, I guess, installation of a uh, regional stormwater basin within the loop of the 29 on-ramp. Um, this was identified in our stormwater master plan. Um, that we have to reduce our uh, phosphorus loadings as a village as a whole. Um, this single project would, I guess, accomplish 20% of what we need to remove. Um, so for us, there is a pretty good benefit of having that done. So is this fourth item in 47? Yes. It is? Yep. Mm -hmm. right. There's four items that I guess would be responding There's to the DOT. Motion. Detours, cost shares, draft statements. Okay, so what do we? <laughs> Oh, so this, this is so this is kind of related to the uh, cost share. Yeah. So okay. as we uh, initially talked to the DOT about installing this pond, um, their initial response was no, because we said you should pay 100% of it and put it in. Uh, so uh, I guess my request would be that uh, the 1.22 million they were initially going to pay for the uh, storm sewer upsizing, we request that they put that instead into the pond construction. Um, yeah. Here, and then we'd also apply as a joint group for um, DNR grants for stormwater um, construction, uh, yeah. water, water quality, and we could probably, if, if all it comes to fruition, we would get this for probably uh, less than a quarter of what uh, we initially would be paying. So I approve that. Are we? Uh, so the one point two two million. Right. They don't have to. We can ask for it. We can ask for it. They don't have to, but I mean, yeah. they are already willing to pay that if we said, hey, we want you to upsize the storm sewer. So I, I think it's at least a, worth an ask. I agree. Um, at the very least, we'd like to have the permission to install a pond within the DOT right away um, and still then apply for DNR grants for the pond construction. I think overall, the Wisconsin River is I think, like less than 900 feet away. So I, the state is asking us to improve the stormwater we're discharging. You know, they, they can assist us with that, especially since water from Business 51 and Highway 29 end up it would end up in that pond. So, so just natural water ends up there, or do we actually funnel it to there too? Right. We funnel it to there. We so right it. now we have a 60-inch pipe mm -hmm. uh, right here that exists. Okay. Um, so that runs down Hughes Avenue currently. And then crosses under Volkman. Yep. Okay. You know, right? And the yeah. road tracks is up on the yep. other side. Okay, go ahead. What? Yeah, so right now this pipe collects water. Yep. Um, it goes under, it's under Hughes Avenue. Yep. So it takes everything from the high school, um, parts of Rothschild that comes under the highway. Up Volkman up there. Yeah. Yep. So it kind of drains that whole, um, okay. kind of be the yes. western portion. I move to approve allowing Wisconsin DOT to utilize Ross Ave and Schofield to have assigned detours as long as the reconstruction of Business 51 is properly coordinated with the reconstruction of those two streets. Deny the request for upsizing the storm sewer from State Highway 29 to Post Ave. Approve the 2023 SMMA agreement with the attached red strikeout verbiage removed so it is comparable to the 2008 SMA agreement with the Wisconsin DOT and work with the Wisconsin DOT to allow for the State Highway 29 storm pond to be built within the Wisconsin DOT right away with Wisconsin DOT contributing to the construction costs equal to what the oversizing cost would be. So Motion by Cronin. Second. Second by Harninger. You have to read it again. 
Uh, any more on the question? Backwards. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. But Mike, you just let us know that. They get back to us on how that looks. Yeah, we'll see what they say. How, how long they usually take? Okay, 48. The intergovernmental agreement with City of Schofield for reconstruction of Ross Avenue from Metro Drive to Alderson Street. Can I talk a lot more? Okay. Not much more. <laughs> um, so this is a, a joint um, I guess, uh, agreement uh, for the reconstruction of Ross Ave, which we kind of touched on there. Um, so the road is 50-50. The north portion is in the City of Schofield, the southern portion is in the Village of Weston. So uh, essentially it just says we'll share the cost of the street reconstruction. Uh, Utility-wise, uh, the sanitary sewer is Schofield and the water main is ours from Alderson to Greenheck Drive and then Greenheck Drive to the Metro is Schofield. So we would take on utility costs on our own. Are there any thoughts on roundabouts there? So it actually does include a roundabout at Alderson and a roundabout at Metro. And Metro. That's what was approved. Well, I know Greenheck is kind of looking for that too. Correct. Yeah, and we had letters of support from Greenheck, Crystal Finishing. Okay, Ross Good. 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 By Zagami. Second. Second by Ermling. Any more on the question about roundabouts, Steve? Nope. No, I'm good. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 49, 2023 billing rates for other entities. So um, if it, when we build the town for the street work we do and anything else we do, we have an approved set of billing rates that is approved. I built Ford, and as you can see, um, you go down. Thank you. So those, what we do usually is we take one of the higher person's pay rate in that department, and that is what we charge with an, an additional administration fee. So like if I were to work for the town of Weston, or a saw would work for the town of Weston, they would use my rate to build the town for any work that we do. Um, for streets, same thing, they use like one of their top operator wages um, to build the town for this, the work that we do in the other streets. And it also has an um, administration overhead rate on there. Um, we did update these for the wage increases received for 2023. And we're just looking for approval on these rates we can share with our um, communities. Um, so would we really want to take uh, one of them down? As long as we have it established, why don't we leave it alone? No? no. You want to take it down? I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't move that down $5. Is that, am I reading that correctly? For human resources, elections, oh. and clerk? I would leave that at $75. Okay. Yeah, I, I just would. And I, I mean, Wages are, are sky high, and we're not moving administration um, or building inspections at all. And uh, the other ones are, what, uh, about 11, 12 percent, about less than that on the next one. I think that $5 is going to be just fine. I'd leave that one at $75. That'd be my opinion, and now we're looking for someone's uh, uh, motion. Trustee Hardy. Yeah, I'm looking at it. So you're, you're, you're requesting to lower it by $5? Uh, no, I'm that $5 credit over there, the $70 yeah. one, Yeah, that one should stay at $75. Right. Am I assuming that that was $75? Yeah. I, I just that's saw, yeah, I just saw the parentheses. Uh, so you're, you're, you're requesting to lower it $5 to $70. It's currently at $75. It's currently at $75. My, my suggestion is to leave it at $75. Right, got it. Yeah. Okay. These, these should only go up, we shouldn't. That was, uh, that was the only change. I mean, unless there was a, a huge uh, issue. Right. But um, why we're doing that is because uh, we incredibly got lucky with some new staff, and that new staff might be making a little bit less than the other staff. Mm -hmm. So we probably did that, and I don't think we should have to. So, so that would be my thought when somebody here makes a motion to approve this. I'll make a motion to so with with the seventy five dollars yeah. motion by Ermling, second, second by Zagami. You stalled long enough by Zagami. Uh, any more on the question? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. So carried. 
All right. Now that, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we're on 50. Request a review of Judgment Lee. Marathon County Court Case Number 15-CV-434, Village of Weston versus Jacob Roth, ETL by David Roth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this was a letter that was presented to the board in January, I believe. I, don't, I guess I'm not quite sure what the request is. So Mr. Roth is here. Okay. And uh, go ahead. also we have uh, Attorney Edie yep. who's uh, involved in the uh, um, abatement of a nuisance at the particular property. I think that's in question here. So. Okay. Uh, why don't you state your name and, and address for the record? First of all, do you have a copy of this? Uh, nope. name, name and address for the record. What's that? Name and address for the record. Oh, it's David Roth, 3406 Copiel Ave. All right, thank you, David. Okay, go ahead. Do you have a copy of this? I left it last to. There's a copy. In there's a copy. On yeah, it. there's a yeah, copy inside. Does everybody have one of these? In our yes. packets. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's. I don't thought I were okay. Uh, I'm just asking again for this to be dismissed. The reason is I got a notice, oh, six weeks ago or better from the court that there was going to be a phone conference. So I came down here before the con phone conference to ask for this to dismiss, but you 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 met me and told me I had to be on the agenda. And anyway, <coughs> went down to the courthouse and it was dismissed or prolonged. So we didn't even get the phone conference. Uh, I'm, as you all see on here, there's my attorney, uh, you, you all see it, I'm sure, that uh, you're trying to get a payment under the <laughs> Geezy, I looked that word up to find out what that word was, and it's kind of like a masquerade. You know, you got a mask on, or by, in the closet type thing. <laughs> I don't understand, and uh, the law firm, he says, the, or the attorney is saying that the law firm, not him, but the law firm has spent the extra amount of money. I don't know how the village or the city of Weston pays is it the attorney that's working for him, and I don't know all that, how that is, but it sounds like he's trying to double dip to me. I don't know. If he's getting paid by you and then he's trying to collect on the backside under the geezy, <laughs> that doesn't. No, it's, it's uh, David, it's under the guise. So it's under the guise of a fine. So it's it's not a closet issue. It's not a mask on. It's under the disguise of a fine. And this yeah. letter, this letter is written to you by who? Who is Todd Joseph Kobach? I had my attorney at the time. So it's your attorney talking to you. That's what's happening. So it's no, it's nobody else. It'd be certainly somebody on your side uh, that that agrees with you, that is representing you, and you're paying your attorney. So well, he done. I, I don't, I don't. I he done quit because <laughs> you guys tapped me out. I ain't got a penny to. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. <laughs> okay. So what you're asking here today, David, is uh, to dismiss uh, this and forget it and let's go yeah. on. I, I, in my opinion, that's I, I, I won't. I, I won't do that. I won't dismiss it. That will be my one opinion out of seven here. And I'll certainly let the rest do that. So if we have to officially deny that, um, I, with the way this is a request of review of judgment lien. So are we reviewing this or do we have to take action? I, I'm only assuming what he was going to bring up. I think perhaps you might want to hear. I can't. Uh, Attorney Edie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely want to hear. Should we? Yes. I mean, Matt, do you, should we? Should you jump in this or not? Okay, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh -huh. um, I filed a lawsuit back on June 1 of 2015 because there were uh, neighbor complaints uh, to the village, and there was actually a tenant that had a restaurant uh, who was upset about all the junk that was in the parking lot and thought it was affecting his business. And so the village asked me to. Uh, stop the, the violation of a, a building code by having what they thought was a kind of a junkyard uh, in the parking lot of this facility. So uh, I look back at the history and 
this has been a problem for a very long time. Uh, there's records going back to 2001 where neighbors were complaining about uh, junk stored on the property. Uh, the village started getting involved with sending letters in 2003. And uh, this continued on until 2010 when the property was deemed to be a chronic nuisance premises. And the village attorney before me filed an action to have the nuisance abated and for a permanent injunction preventing this kind of activity on the premises. Uh, the problem was at that time, uh, the, uh, the property, uh, there was a restaurant on the property, uh, Betty's Lunch LLC and Marjorie uh, Roth. And so the lawsuit was filed against them. And there was uh, a requirement that the property be cleaned up and also a permanent injunction. But since that time, uh, David and Jacob Roth took over, I guess, the ownership of the, the property. Uh, interestingly, after Marjorie cleaned up the property, she actually filed an eviction action to evict David from the property uh, in small claims court. But David uh, uh, showed up with the argument that he was an owner of the property and therefore couldn't be evicted from the property he owns. So the court dismissed that case. So we filed our action in June of 2015 after all this history. And uh, Mr. Roth hired a lawyer like he had the right to do. The lawyer filed a counterclaim against the village saying that we violated all sorts of constitutional uh, provisions, state laws, uh, that all got thrown out and uh, we ended up going to mediation and we settled the case. Uh, the tenant was also involved in the case because they decided to leave the premises because they didn't think they could run their business there as a restaurant. They were part of the mediation as well uh, because Mr. Roth had sued them for rent and breaching the lease by leaving. That case settled. And uh, we entered into a stipulation uh, between Mr. Roth, uh, Jacob, and the, uh, the village uh, that was assisted with the mediator. And the agreement was he was gonna clean up the property. We were gonna get a permanent injunction and that the forfeiture would be $10,000. There would be no interest uh, that would accrue on it and he would have uh, to pay that amount until November 28, 2027, or when the property sold or transferred, whichever occurred first. Uh, the village has always tried to, at least since I've been involved, uh, they, they, they've tried to not punish people that are violating the code. They try to get them to, to follow the code uh, and uh, the actual forfeiture according to our ordinances back at this time we requested a forfeiture from june 1 2015 until the property was cleaned up our ordinance said that the forfeiture amount should be not less than 50 dollars nor more than 500 dollars each day uh, this case ended up settling uh, in December of 2017, two and a half years after we filed the lawsuit. So if you're looking at what the minimum forfeiture amount would be for that time frame, it would be up in the $45,000 to $50,000 range. So uh, $10,000 was quite a, a uh, generous, a generous, I think, offer by the village. And I am certain that our costs and expenses and attorney fees in fighting this case for the two and a half years uh, was more than $10,000. So, um, and that letter, what the letter was saying, uh, in Wisconsin, typically when you file a complaint, you make a prayer for relief. And our prayer for relief was to uh, require that a forfeiture be paid, the property be cleaned up, and that there be an order that there be no additional violations like this in the future. Uh, there's always a request too for attorney fees and every complaint at the end. Um, in Wisconsin, we follow the American rule, which means that 
uh, the winning party does not get his attorney fees unless there's a statutory provision that allows it. Otherwise, you get your statutory attorney fees, which end up being $1,000 uh, in the largest of cases. So it's nowhere close to what the actual attorney fees are. The idea being that each side should pay for their own attorney fees. Now that doesn't mean that when we're sitting at mediation, we're trying to resolve a case. If we're gonna resolve it for a forfeiture, it's a lot less than what the forfeiture minimum would be under the ordinance. We would look at what time and effort has been expended by the village to try to enforce the ordinance, which would include staff time, any extra expenses, and typically the amount of time that I spend as well. Any questions? None. Any questions? Okay. Um, so what's being requested of us now, uh, it's a request of review, or is it a request of dismissal? David, I think you said a request of dismissal? Yeah, well, yeah. You're asking for a dismissal? Okay. Right, just get rid of it, yeah. I, 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 will, I will make the motion uh, yeah, that we, go ahead. What I was doing, is no more than what everybody in this room does, including the village. You got containers back there for recyclable. David, I, I'm going to stop this meeting. Okay, okay yeah, I'm going to stop. What I'm trying to say, I'm, no. you're all guilty of the same thing I am. No, uh, that's absolutely wrong. Okay. I and I alone am going to tell you that that you are absolutely dead wrong on on your comparison. And we're only talking about the time that the lawsuit was taken out. The years and years and years prior to that and all the warnings, we're only talking about the lawsuit in and moving on. If we went backward all the years that it was still there and being collected and put out as a rummage sale on the weekends, I'm gonna make the motion uh, to deny this request to dismiss. I'll second. I'll second. second by Cronin. Um, any more on the question? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? So carried. Um, 51, request from Marathon County for repaving County Road X from Schofield Avenue to State Highway 29. I move to approve the line the Marathon County Highway Department to use the Schofield Avenue and allow them to work at night to repave County Trunk Highway X between the Schofield Avenue and the State Trunk Highway 29. Motion by Zagami. Second. Second by Wylan. Any more on the question? I have some, I know I exchanged a couple emails with you. Is there any possibility of trying to of work around with the Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I thought you were trying to work with the um, with the Wisconsin DOT. I mean, if they're if they're going to have equipment on site, I don't think there's any reason we can't address those two inter those two um, intersections. Yeah. So oh, 29 on and off ramps as well. I, I talked with Kevin. DOT project. They are, but if we're going to have equipment there, yeah. Why why Still why not have to pave that stretch at the same time? You got to ask the DOT because DOT has to pay them. And right. usually they authorize them to do it, and they got to go through process. Yeah, oh, I understand yeah, that. You can ask them, but yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering if it's if is it worth an ask if we're already going to have equipment there. So, so I did ask that. Um, I, I spoke with a representative of the DOT then today too. Um, they have resurfacing of Highway 29 planned for 2027. And so right now, that's their answer is they're just going to do it when they have the whole going from Business 51 essentially out to Q. That's what's in their program. That's what they have funding for, and that's when they're going to do it. Um, and that would include that would include, and that would then include that stretch between the ramps. They would pave it, or going to take the concrete out. He said it's a resurfacing project. So a DOT speaking, yeah. So I guess you know it's the county will go as far as they're allowed to, but the. It's a weird jurisdictional thing where if they're not going to get paid for it, the county's not going to do more, and the state, you know, the staff members say we got to follow the program, and the program says that's a 2027 project, so we're going to give the county a bunch of money to patch potholes on that for the next uh, what, three years. But uh, yeah, it's, it may be weird, but you're not surprised. Yeah, okay. I'm not surprised either. I, I just I thought it might be worth an ask. That yeah, so tried to say, hey, did you know this was going on? You can. Okay, so 51. Do we have up and down? Do we have a motion on this? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, any more on discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 
Did, did I miss anything for the audience or is all involved for closed session? I think most people are here for the sec for the closed session related to the um, most or all agreement. Most or all, um, probably all but Chief Schultz and mm -hmm. uh, well, Chief Schultz, I guess, would be here for the uh, yeah. okay. other yeah. items. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if you want to take these separately. Okay. And I, you know, I'm thinking that the uh, well, who do we want to excuse first? What's which is the quickest? Perhaps our discussion about the. Uh, Matter under section 1985, parent one, parent F. Yeah, okay, or let's take that one first. Michael See you Wednesday night. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to move to closed session per 19.85, parent one, parent F, considering financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or investigations to wit utility clerk. Uh, so roll call. Alani. Yeah, uh, aye. Hermeling. Aye. Cronin. Aye. 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 Hardinger. Aye. Weiland. Aye. Sagami. Aye. Okay, we are in closed session. I'm requesting that Jim Penasalt 